uh, we're going to be talking about heating curves and doing some calculations. So I've got my calculator right here. Um, so heating curves, uh, regardless of the substance, they all have the same five regions. This heating curve is for water at one atmosphere. And y-axis is going to be temperature. X-axis is going to be heat added in kilojoules per mole. And there are one, two, three, four, five regions. Uh, region number one for water is going to be ice. So H2O solid. Region number two is going to be the solid to liquid transition. So H2O solid using our new equilibrium arrows goes to H2O liquid. We use our equilibrium arrows because sometimes we'll be turning ice into water, other times we'll be turning water into ice, and this reaction is one that we've had experience with going both ways. And then three here, that's all H2O liquid. Region four, takes a lot of energy to overcome all those intermolecular forces between a liquid and a gas phase. This is going to be H2O liquid in equilibrium with H2O gas. Does take a lot of energy. And then up here we have H2O gas. That's region five. That's water vapor. Uh, a couple things I'll ask you to notice. Uh, first off, there are two phase changes. Those are regions two and four. A phase change is when you turn some one phase into another phase. And phase changes occur with no change in temperature. This is important because we're gonna develop a, uh, we're gonna calculate this energy and we need to be able to separate the calculations that involve temperature changes from those that don't. Phase changes occur with no change in temperature. For example, for four, which is vaporization, it'll be delta H vaporization times moles. We'll see that. Uh, that'll allow us to calculate the kilojoules of energy that it takes to do this transition. And there's no temperature change in here, hint, hint. Now, the other ones are going to be solid, liquid, and gas. So a phase changing temperature because temperature is changing. Those are going to be regions one, three, and five. If we look at H2O solid, so we can calculate Q. Q, we're using lowercase q because these are energies. I apologize for not mentioning that before. These are gonna be energies in joules or kilojoules. We need to know the mass times the specific heat capacity times the temperature change. And for this one, I will point out to you that on your first conversion equation sheet, you've got the specific heat capacity of H2O gas, liquid, and solid given. We've also got delta H fusion, which is the solid to liquid transition, and delta H, H vaporization for the liquid to gas transition, which we talked about in our last lecture video. Okay, two types of equations. This is a heating curve. You're adding energy and you're either increasing the temperature or changing the phase. This is a heating curve for octane at one atmosphere. Uh, it has only four regions. And I'll note that we have the freezing point of minus 56.8. And we have the boiling point of 125.7. on here, 
And so because we know this, these are the two phase changes, we must be missing the uh, one that's down here. But we can fill in, so this is going to be uh, solid to liquid. We're going to have a temperature increase for the liquid phase. Liquid to gas, and then up here at the end we have just gas. So this is a heating curve for octane. Next question, carbon dioxide sublimes at one atmosphere, what would the heating curve look like for, a car for carbon dioxide at one atmosphere? Well, sublimation means that we go from carbon dioxide solid straight to carbon dioxide gas. It's still actually an equilibrium process. And what we might do is, uh, let's see, uh, that transition uh, tends to occur at, or the equilibrium pressure, so T sublimation is minus 78.5. I'll still label my axes, temperature in degrees Celsius, energy in kilojoules, and what we'll see is below 78.5, we will have just the solid phase for CO2. Then there will be a sublimation. And we'll draw a nice long line for that. And straight to gas. With a solid to gas transition. Totally possible. Uh, there are many variations on this one, but by far the most common one is going to be the one for water. Now let's do some calculations involving the heating curve for water. Question, how much energy does it take to turn 50 grams of steam at 110 degrees Celsius to water at 25 degrees Celsius? Now I have the heating curve in miniature here. I'm gonna go back to my big heating curve for a second and just point out to you that if we're at 110 degrees Celsius, we're 100, we're somewhere in the H2O gas phase. And then we're gonna go down to 25 degrees Celsius, which is right here. So we're going to have what amounts to a five, a four, and a three calculation. So I'll just draw that here. We're up here in the gas phase we have this is the liquid to gas transition and then liquid and we end up down here at 25 degrees Celsius. Now uh, we've talked about before going one, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to be going from five, four, three. We're gonna start at 110 degrees Celsius and end at 25 degrees Celsius. So we're gonna be moving this way. Now, uh, we are then going to be removing heat from the water, or from the H2O, let's say. And therefore, all of our terms for this, terms will be negative. Because you can add heat, you can also take it away. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Q5. Here I have a change in temperature, so I'm gonna need my mass of my H2O, I'm gonna need my specific heat of my H2O gas, and I'm gonna need my delta T because the temperature is changing. For this one, I have my mass, which is gonna be 50 grams, 50.0 grams of steam. My specific heat of steam is 2.03 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my temperature change, well, temperature changes are always T final minus T initial. My initial temperature change is, or my initial temperature is 110 degrees Celsius. 
my final temperature is 100 degrees Celsius. Common mistake just to go straight from 110 to 25 without considering the heating curve. Uh, but please do consider the heating curve. Even if it's not drawn for you, hopefully by the time we get to an exam, you'll be familiar enough with it to think about it and or draw it for your problem. We can see that 100 minus 110 is going to be negative. That means our answer will be negative. Yay! And I multiply this out. 100 minus 110 is just minus 10 times 2.03 times 50. I get minus 1,015 units of joules. I can see my grams cancel, my degrees Celsius cancel. I'm left with joules. Now I've gone from uh, 5 down to the point for 4. Now let's do a 4 calculation. This time I'm going to be going from gas to liquid. So uh, I will write Q4 as delta H condensation times moles. I don't know, I tend to write it as minus delta H vaporization times moles. However you do it, uh, my delta H of vaporization um, is 40.7 kilojoules per mole. That's minus 40,700 joules per mole with a negative sign. And my moles come from the fact that I have 50 grams of H2O. And I use my molar mass to get my moles. 18.02 grams of H2O per mole. I get 2.77 moles. Multiplying that out, so 2.77 times 40,700, negative, and I get minus 112,739 joules. We'll carry the digits for now, but we'll simplify later to three sig figs. So we just went from all the way across this four area. That's important to remember that we're still at 100 degrees we need to get down to 25 degrees and we need to do it for a liquid. We have a temperature change. We know that temperature changes for a liquid. We know our mass, which has not changed. Four point one eight four joules per gram degree Celsius, my old friend. And now, remember, T initial is 100. T final is 25 degrees. That makes this term negative again. And plugging it in. 25 minus 100 times 4.184 times 50 minus 15,690. Now, how much energy does it take to turn 50 grams of steam at 110 degrees Celsius to water at 25 degrees Celsius? That's going to be Q5 plus Q4 plus Q3. Add them up. 15,690 minus, just to get my negative in there, 112,739 minus 1015. I get minus 129,444 joules. Doesn't say what units to do it in. I'm just going to do it minus 1.29 times 10 to the fifth joules to three sig figs. 
lots of calculations, but some of these, actually all of these are calculations we've done before. It's just a new environment for them. And that is a heating curve calculation. Oh, I had two pages to do that in. I think you'll need it for the lecture notes. I had uh, full size. And this problem will be a companion problem. You'll see a couple of these on the homework as well.